Hello, uh, this is chapter 15, International Portfolio Investment. So throughout the chapter uh, 11 to, uh, to the uh, 14, we looked at the international um, security market, uh, which includes the money market, bond market, equity market, and derivative markets. Now, how to form the international portfolio. So this chapter discusses why investors diversify their portfolio internationally, how much investor can gain from international diversification, the effects of fluctuating exchange rate on international portfolio investment, whether and how much investors can benefit from investing in US-based international mutual fund and the reason for home bias in portfolio holdings. So this graph actually showed the um, surge of the in US investment in foreign equity. So if you look at the 1980, it's not very high, it's very, very uh, low, but in 2014, now it increased a lot actually, right? So you can see that both the foreign in equity holding and the, the weight on foreign equities are substantially increased last 30, 40 years. Now see why. So these trend can be explained by the international correlation structure. So security returns are much less correlated across the countries than within the country. So it means that if you, if you calculate the correlation with the stock in domestic market here in the United States market, US market, will be higher than the correlation with international market, such as like Chinese market, or like an Asian market or European markets and so on. And this obviously true, this is very uh, understandable because economic, political, institutional, and even psychological factors or cultural factors of adding security returns tends to vary across countries. So country has different culture, different uh, politics, the institution, economic, and psychologists, you know, and all factors are different. And they result in low correlations among international securities. Secondly, the business cycle may be different too. So, so sometimes the US economy is good, but European economy is bad, and you know, vice versa, then security returns may be different. So, this is the divert the, the portfolio. The, so this is the, the X is the number of stocks, and the Y is the average standard deviation. Okay. Average standard deviation. With switch stocks, you can decrease up to like the such as about forty four percent. That's with U.S. stock. It declined to about 27%. So domestically, like it, within Swiss market, the it declines to about 44% portfolio risk. Only US market increased the number of uh, stocks in the portfolio, decreased up to about 27%. Now, if you increase like a calculate international stocks, then it becomes 12%. So when fully diversified, an international portfolio can be less than half as risky as a purely US portfolio, even a lot less than the Switzerland portfolio. So in many cases, a fully diversified international portfolio is about 
12% as risk as holding a single security. Very low, very low. This is why we invest internationally. The effect of diversification is a lot better. It's more effective because of low correlation. Now, if you look at the summary statics of the monthly return for the 12 major stock market from the January 1980 to December 2015, it's in US dollars. Now, relatively low international correlation, this implies, implies that investors should be able to reduce portfolio risk more if they diversify internationally rather than domestically. And these are the correlation tables, fairly low especially between, the, so look at the correlation matrix with the US, this one. So with European market relatively high, but with Japanese market is only 0 0.38. And now this better, measures, so there's a better here, right? And measures sensitivity of the market to the world market. And now clearly the Japanese market is more sensitive to world market than the US. So Japanese is 0 0.96, US is 0 0.88. So if you combine two, then obviously uh, you have lower better eventually. I mean, lower risk, I mean, not lower better, the lower total risk eventually, because they are not perfectly correlated, perfectly positively correlated. So how to select the optimal international portfolio? So the correlation of the US stock market with the return on the stock market in other, in other nations varies. If you look at this table again, Right, so the correlation of the US market with the Canadian market, let's see that. So US versus, this is Canada, 0 0.77. Japanese market, 0 0.38. So you have more diversifications from investment in Japan than Canada. And geographically, Canadian market are more related to the US market, rather like comparing with Japan, right? So, and they're more connected, like the economically or politically. So it's very obvious that if you invest in Japan rather than in Canada, you can have more diversification. Does it really mean that you have to, you know, you only, you only have to invest in Japan, but if you want to aim to decrease the, uh, the total risk as much as possible, then you have to pick the, the stocks in the, the, in the country with the low correlation. So this is the graphs. Uh, this is efficient set. And this is optimal international portfolio. And every portfolio should be under this efficient frontier. If it's in front here, okay, and it's pretty obvious because that's why we form a portfolio. So this is the composition of the optimal international portfolio by investors dot domicile, and note that the optimal international portfolio has the highest possible Sharpe ratio. Highest possible shop ratio. That's why we make this optimal, right? As you can see in the uh, the next to the last column of the table, U.S. investors uh, optimal international portfolio comprise now Hong Kong market. 10.45% Italian, 0.01, Swiss 31.15, US market 
uh, 39% total hundred percent. Okay. So the, these table actually show the, 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 the gains from the internet diversifications. And if you focus on this Delta SHP, which is the increase in the shop performance measure, it's a difference between the domestic portfolio and the optimal international portfolio. And if you look at the US, then the mean return for domestic portfolio is 1.04%. Mean return for the optimal international portfolio is 1.07. And the shop ratio is 0 0.1524 for domestic and 0 0.164 for international. And you, you see the increase in this shop ratio. So this means that you are better off. You are better off. You have all positive change in shop performance measure, which means international portfolio, multi optimal portfolio are always better, better than the domestic portfolio. If you look at the extra return here, delta R, you can also see all returns are positive, which means these return, uh, the international optimal portfolio give, optimal international portfolio actually gives higher returns than domestic optimal portfolio. So that's a major benefit of the international diversification. Number one, because of low correlation, you can diversify more. Number two, you can actually have better shop performance measure, which lead to the better returns. Okay.